Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the Azure Durable Functions. Azure Durable Functions is part of the Implement Azure Functions topic under AZ204 certification. So come, let's dive in. So you already know what is Azure Function. Azure Function is a piece of, uh, you know, coding or program logic that executes on a Azure portal, which is a serverless platform. Now, Azure Durable Functions are meant to be uh, when you want to build a complex workflow in a serverless environment and uh, this is the uh, this is the right choice to go with it durable functions what you can do is you can write long running workflows that spans across multiple functions invocations and even multiple instances of your functions can be invoked and we are going to see both examples in this video so in this video the first part what we are going to do is we are going to take a closer look at the durable functions and how to use them to orchestrate the complex workflow with an example of azure function chaining come let's take a look at so in order to create an uh, azure durable function which is called orchestration function you right click on the function and click on add new function and when you choose this new function template so i'm just gonna name this as uh, test function so let let me add this and then this is the template so in this template what you need to choose is the orchestration so if you scroll down there's something called durable function entity and durable function orchestration so once you choose this and add it, it will give you some basic, uh, you know, flow. So this is the default template that, uh, you know, the Microsoft is generating from the Visual Studio. So basically what it is doing is it will have the activity function. It will have the starter function and then it will have the, the, the main function. Okay. So basically it is calling the same endpoint a couple of times and passing different, different values. Okay. So this is a starting point, but I will show you how to do this chaining function based out of the initial template. So this is the Azure chaining function example. So this is very easy. If you have already learned what is Azure functions, we earlier saw what is the HTTP trigger or um, a timer function, right? So they all deal with a keyword called a HTTP trigger that is an attribute. And for the timer, it will be HTTP timer. Okay. So similarly, for this uh, durable functions, basically what we are going to do is we will have a function called activity trigger. Okay. When we declare some a piece of code, a function as activity trigger, you cannot invoke that by yourself. This has to be invoked by only the orchestration done through the durable functions. Okay. So what we are going to do is our example, the first one, the chaining of function are very simple. We will have uh, four activity trigger functions. If you see this first function, it's get input. It's very simple one. Okay. To keep it simple, we have something called input, which is string and then a I logger. What it is doing is this, if whenever this method is called, this function is invoked, we just log it and we return a piece of string. And there is a second function called activity trigger and then that also same thing. So all the four functions accepts an input returns the input. Okay, because the written type is string. So what we are going to do is we are going to create another method and we will call that function name as chaining function. So the function name is chaining. Now here is the difference. What you have to notice here is there is something called a function name. It doesn't matter what it is run or whatever you name you can name it. Basically it returns a task of string, which is an asynchronous operation. Okay. Now this is the important thing. So our attribute for this function is orchestration trigger. This is the attribute and this goes with I durable orchestration context. Okay. So these two are the important piece. Now what we will do inside this is we will have a try catch block. Okay. To keep this example simple, basically using this context, you can say call activity async and then the return type is string because all our return type of this method is string right so that's why the return type is string and then you name the 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 activity trigger function name so here the function name is get input okay so we call the we we, we name this uh, name of the function and then we pass an input because there's an input 
which accepts an input this method now once we call this it returns a result right so now you pass this so now the output of the first function is passed as an input to the next function so we're chaining the functions so we are calling four different functions get input process input transform the transform form data as a function name and then the last one the process data so this is just an example so the input is passed we get the result that is passed as an input to this one similarly the result of this is passed here like in like this right so we are passing the input one after the other so all these four functions will get executed and then the final result will be done so here when we call about uh, so here when we talk about the orchestration basically this is the main function which does the orchestration so in this function it is doing four different work four different functions are invoked and it knows what to do on each call so that is what is called orchestration and any orchestration trigger is called the uh, durable functions now how do you invoke this function in order to invoke this function we need to have another http trigger function okay so if you look at this i named a uh, function name as chaining http start its attribute is http trigger okay this is all common the authorization level is function this is the post call which accepts an http request and then it also accepts durable client i durable orchestration client which is a starter we named this as starter now this is the signature of an orchestration method that you have to remember that's it no nothing else now what we do when someone someone invokes this http endpoint we start this function we start this chaining function and then we wait for this chaining function to finish and once it is finished it will return whatever it is returning that's it so i'm going to run this and show you how it works okay so now the application is running now you can clearly see i have a lot of uh, http endpoints so the one that we are interested in is the orchestration function http start okay so this is the uh, function that we are interested in. so let's copy this and you can also see all the activity triggers that you call right all the activity triggers like process input process data all these are activity triggers they do not have url they cannot be invoked directly they have to be invoked through any of these uh, exposed http calls okay so that's why you don't see this urls here so we already know the url that we have to invoke and which is this one um, actually not this one the chaining http so we are going to copy this one okay this is another example i will show you shortly okay I have opened up the postman and this is a post call and this is the URL that we have to hit so I'm going to click on send and when I did that you can see the request is accepted and these are the endpoints like you see the status in order to see the status of this call you can click on this URL you can also do all these other operations but when we clicked on this you can see there was a call happening so the first one this one was triggered and then the chaining got triggered we call the get input and then process input transform data input process data okay so that's how it is called so let me hit this one more time and you can see the logs coming up here all right so basically uh, to to wrap up this durable functions are very important orchestration function so so basically in durable function your orchestration is based on what you're going to perform so this example that we saw was called chaining uh, chaining the functions okay in the next video i'm going to talk about a very complex uh, durable function which will involve a fan in and fan out so we're going to call multiple apis i mean the multiple functions in continuously and then we're going to orchestrate a complex uh, situation i hope you like this video and you enjoy this video and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.